I am the Empress of the Nara clan, a figure from the annals of Chinese history whose life has been shrouded in intrigue and controversy. Born on March 11, 1718, my journey through the Qing dynasty's imperial court would take me from obscurity to prominence and ultimately to a fate filled with uncertainty and enigma. In the early years of my life, I was known as Jian, a noble consort, and a member of the illustrious Nara clan. My father, Narbu, served as a Niru Ejen, an assistant captain within the bordered blue banner. Little did I know that my lineage and upbringing would pave the way for my involvement in the intricate politics of the Qing dynasty. My life took a dramatic turn in 1735, with the ascension of Hong Li, who would become known as Emperor Qianlong, to the throne. Before his enthronement, his father, the Yongzheng Emperor, appointed me as his secondary consort. During this period, I garnered the favor of the young Prince Hong Li, which would prove pivotal in my journey. Tragedy struck with the untimely death of Empress Xiaoxian Chun in 1748, leading to my unexpected rise. I was elevated to the esteemed rank of Empress Consort. My newfound status came with significant responsibilities, including accompanying Emperor Qianlong on various imperial journeys, participating in ancestral worship ceremonies, and joining him on hunting expeditions. However, my life is characterized by historical gaps and a lack of physical descriptions. The absence of comprehensive documentation has fueled speculation among Chinese historians about my existence and character. Some even suspect that Emperor Qianlong deliberately erased imperial records and portraits associated with me, adding layers of mystery to my story. One of the most pivotal moments in my life occurred in 1765 during a tour of southern China with Emperor Qianlong. In Hangzhou, I took a fateful step by cutting my hair. In ancient Manchurian customs, this act was considered a grave offense, laden with symbolism that seemed to curse the emperor and the empress dowager. This decision led to a swift loss of authority and favor. Though never officially deposed, I faced a significant decline in my influence. Emperor Qinlong ordered the confiscation of my imperial edicts, gifts, and even my imperial seal. My position within the imperial harem was drastically reduced, marking a stark shift from prominence to obscurity. My life came to a close in the seventh month of the 31st year of Emperor Qianlong's reign, although the exact date remains a subject of debate. The circumstances surrounding my death were marked by a peculiar set of events. While the emperor was away on an annual hunting excursion, my funeral was treated as that of an imperial noble consort, despite my earlier role as empress. The ceremony was notably more subdued with the cancellation of certain imperial rituals and requirements. I was laid to rest in the Yu Mausoleum of the Eastern Qing tombs, adjacent to imperial noble consort Chun Hui, rather than being entombed beside the emperor, as was customary for empresses. My life, from its early nobility to its later uncertainties, remains an enigmatic chapter in the rich tapestry of Chinese history. The debate over my maiden name, my actions, and my ultimate fate continues to captivate historians and storytellers, underscoring the enduring fascination with the Qing dynasty and its complex cast of characters.